from Waterbox Live, the best day of the week. It is Wednesday, and uh, make sure you like the stream, share it, subscribe to our channel so you get all the notifications. We are here every Wednesday, and today we are adding frags to the 105.4 um, <clears throat> frag that we are revisiting. Let's get it started. All right, we are back. Did you see Rich is not here this week, so it's just me and the guys over there running um, everything on the computers and audio. So they will be actually looking for you know questions and stuff, so definitely put them in there. We'll get to them as we can. Very exciting episode because we're actually adding coral to the frag. This is one that we did a 10-week series on about six months ago. We spent the last couple weeks revisiting maintenance um, you know, and care and all that. So today, uh, Worldwide sent us up some beautiful coral to add to it. They actually put all the livestock in it in the original build as well. So everything you see is full Worldwide coral um, in this build. And they're actually doing a uh, St. Patrick's Day sale. So we want to let you know about that. This is online only. You got 25% off all green corals, 10% off all livestock. So definitely check them out. Great selection. You'll see some of that um, in the tank here today. And, um, you know, beautiful selection as always from worldwide. So we're going to be adding corals. Always fun for that. So I don't know if we've got anything question wise uh, before we head out there. We are also going to give away some t-shirts today. Uh, so we have your knowledge shirts. You can actually get them on the website and we'll have two that we're going to give away at the end of the episode. So make sure you hit that like and you know engage in the comments so that we can pick a good winners. Yeah, sure. Um, I have a question from Corey and I'm trying to get it up on the screen. <laughs> Um, might be verbal, might be on the screen. We'll see what we got going on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's saying I just bought an 85 gallon frag and was wondering how close um, could I have it to the wall and not have any water getting on the wall. Um, it's not really a concern about water as much. You may get some salt creep, but just for the ability to, if something falls behind there, having your cords, being able to reach anything. Um, you know, I always say at least probably four inches. A lot of times people go maybe closer to six, but don't go right up against the wall because you're going to have trouble getting your cords to go across or if you drop something back there or like a fish jumps, um, you're going to try and get it out. You won't have much access. So definitely give a little bit of space away from the wall, three to six inches, somewhere around there. Awesome. Got another one here from Anthony. He's asking, what sort of things should I consider when it comes to coral stocking your first order? So as far as like the order of putting in corals, um, you really want to base it upon easiest to hardest and take your time with the stocking. So we've gone over this a lot of times in all of our builds. We usually talk about like the first corals we add and then we add to that. So you're going to add your soft corals first. These have no hard skeleton. They're all flesh. Mushrooms, zoanthids, star polyps, clove polyps, things like that. Uh, much easier and more forgiving water quality. And they're going to be faster growing as well. Then if you're moving past softies in your tank, everything's stable. You go with what's called LPS, large polyp stonies. They're like frog spawns, hammers, chalices, acans, blastos. They have a skeleton, but they also have flesh. And then most people don't venture all the way up to SPS because it's the hardest, but those are like your acropores, millies, um, monopores, that kind of stuff, and those are the hardest to keep. And you definitely have to have a really well-established aquarium for those. So don't jump up to SPS. Those are definitely something that takes um, a lot more care and patience with. Cool. Um, I have another one here from Shim Sham Blue saying uh, we're switching lights. Any suggestions to not burn everything? Acclimation period? It really depends on what light you're coming from and to. Um, a lot of times if you're getting something like you know AI or Ecotech, Primes, Hydras, um, Radions, they do have an acclimation mode, which I do suggest because it's going to let it kind of ramp to all its intensity and let everything adjust. Um, but it really depends on what you're coming from. If you're coming from like a low light, uh, normal LED and then going to a high powered, you're definitely going to take some um, longer precaution. Just it, you know, if it's got an acclimation mode, use it. Um, if not, I'd say start at like 25% power. You know, after a week, add a little bit more. As long as nothing looks stressed and you're not bleaching anything, there's not an exact science to it, I would say. 
You guys have a lot of questions early. I like it. Yeah, I just have one. <laughs> I, I think we'll do one more. Okay. And we'll go ahead and get to the, the good stuff. Um, Cheyenne is asking, my tank is several months old. When is it safe to add an anemone to form a new cloud? Um, it will depend on the type of anemone. Uh, your easiest one to care for is going to be a bubble tip, but they are also the ones that move the most. And um, you do want to be cautious of that because they'll sting stuff if they move next to it. And there's certain ones um, that are going to be harder to keep. But usually at three to six months, if you have coral, you have fish, everything's stable, you're testing your water, I think you're good to go ahead and try the easy to moderate type of um, anemones. You've got bubble tips, you've got sea bay anemones, you've got long tentacles. Carbon anemones get huge. Um, you know, stick with probably that type of types of corals uh, or anemones um, three to six months in, somewhere around there. I said that was the last question, but I actually have one more. You have one more? Keenan loves questions. He just, he just loves them. <laughs> I think it's very fitting for what we're about to do right now. Okay, asking, what do we got? Daniel is asking, when you're adding new corals to the tank, do you have to lower the lights and the flow every time to introduce new corals? No, I mean, honestly, it depends on what kind of lighting they're kept under. But most places now are using LEDs. And you'll find that a lot of them are using hydras or radions, um, you know, along those as far as your lighting goes, like worldwide. They're using all AI and ecotech and um, equipment. So we know that they're coming from very similar lighting that we're using. So it's not enough of a difference that you have to acclimate. If you go to somewhere that's like keeping them under metal halide, maybe a little more old school, um, going to LED, you may want to do an acclimation. Um, but usually, instead of adjusting your lights, put the coral at the bottom of the tank and then slowly raise them up versus trying to like change the light cycle and stress out everything else every single time. Put it more shaded and then slowly bring it to the spot that you want it to be. It's going to be more reasonable than adjust your schedule every time. All right, Keenan says we're allowed to go put corals in the tank now. Uh, so we're going to go out to the frag and put some of these beautiful stuff in here. Frag is always looking gorgeous. And this is definitely the, like, the last set of corals that we're going to be putting into the frag because there's not that much more room. But we had a couple spots that we wanted to fill in. And then we'll just let everything grow. It's already done so much, as you can see. Um, you know, we've got a couple places, but we want to get a little bit more flowy stuff in here. And Worldwide hooked us up with a really nice set of um, corals. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this hammer. I'm going to put them off to a different spot for now. Just because we're going to go ahead and just take all the corals out and we're going to line them up in the front here. Reason for this is all of them generally have plugs and I have to really decide where I want to keep them. And a lot of the spots that I want to put them are going to be like on more angled pieces of the rock, spots that aren't filled in already. And for that, I'm going to need to take the plug off and also epoxy them into place. So I'm going to let them settle in for a few days. And then early next week, go ahead and put them all into their spots um, that they're going to permanently be at. So for now, they're just going to go in the sand bed. They'll be perfectly good there. They'll adjust to the tank, the light cycle, all of that. So we're just going to randomly pick some bags. And they were... Awesome enough, they dipped the corals for us beforehand so we didn't have to go through that process. And they have labeled the bags as well. So this one we have a lemon drop ganiopora. And these things have really long tentacles, but they just shrivel completely up into their skeleton. So when they're in the bag, they look like absolutely nothing. But these guys will be nice and long and flowy. And I love ganiaporas. Ganys and alvies are one of my favorites as far as like flowy LPS go. And they are a little bit more sensitive and take uh, higher requirements for feeding. So they're not something that you want to throw into a tank right away. So you can see, like, they're actually all into their skeleton. And you'll be amazed at how big these actually do get. But you can tell that it has, like, a yellow center and then the green little flower tentacles on it. Let me see if I can find. There's quite a few alveopores and ganiopores in here. So this one is called the frozen ganiopora. I'm guessing after the movie. Um, you can see a lot of these on their website as well. And the, you'll see the pictures of them open. And we're going to do an update on everything once it gets settled into the aquarium as well. So you can see these. This guy's all tucked in. We'll see how much they decide to come out. So I'm just going to put them all up in there. 
There we go. We have a Northern Lights Alveopora. <clears throat> One fun fact about like Alveoporas and Ganyapora is they are very similar. A lot of people get them confused Doop. because they have the same. They look a lot the same whenever they're closed up. You see Alveopora like goes all the way into its skeleton. It looks like a little honeycomb went all the way in there. And then the number of like uh, tips on each petal um, are different between the Alveopora and Ganyapora. So Alveopora has less. Ganyapora has more, something like 14 to 26 or something right around that number. So you can tell when you're looking at them because they look a lot similar is uh, Alveopora's have less flower petals, I call them, um, on each one than the Ganyapora does. Just to note, they're a bit hard to see right now, but okay. next but, uh, Friday when we do the close-ups of each one, you'll be mm -hmm. able to see the details on this is an emerald Ganyapora, and he's actually staying out a little bit. He's going to be super long and flowy because he is not even all the way tucked into a skeleton. I know it's always so hard when we're putting corals into a tank because you can't really enjoy them right away. A lot of people, like, you pick up a coral from a store and you're like, it was so beautiful. And then you get home, you're like, oh my God, what's wrong? It's totally normal for a coral to completely close up, and it can take a day or two for them to kind of open up and kind of adjust to the aquarium. So. Don't freak out necessarily if it doesn't look exactly like when you picked it up until it settles in. And then this one I'm doing is called a Fruit Loop Micro. And this one has some nice color. See there. And it kind of might be hard to see, but guy, I can see yellow, orange, and pink in that piece. That is going to be beautiful. So definitely a nice variety to add some flow and color into the frag and the few open spots that we have. And we have a limelight hydnophora. Let's see what this one looks like. <clears throat> so he's all closed up, but you got some blue, yellow, and green along with like some purple on there. Hydnophore can be a little bit more aggressive, so it does have longer sweeper tentacles, so it will go somewhere that is not um, super close to other corals. Give him a little area on his own so that he doesn't go and sting corals nearby. You have to be careful with some corals like Galaxia, Hydnophore. They are what's considered like more aggressive as they have longer sweeper tentacles. A lot of times they come out at night and sting everyone around them. All right. We have a cherry red micro. You can see this is going to be super bright, kind of a mix of like an orange or pink. And it's a micro just like the Fruit Loop one, but you can see a little bit of color to variety difference. And those won't get as long as the Ganyaporos and Alveoporos do, but they'll still have like some fuzziness to them. We got all of here. This is a very popular one. Um, I'm sure most people have seen it in their stores or online or some nice beautiful colonies. The Bubblegum Monster Chalice. This is probably one of the originals that started the chalice craze <clears throat> years ago. It's a pretty fast grower for a chalice as well. But it's like almost like a sparkly green and yellow and then it's got those pink eyes to it. And as it grows, that green color stays and then those eyes just kind of like fill in and it becomes this like just spotted look to it, but it's a really nice contrast of colors. But that's probably one of the ones that got the whole chalice thing going. All right, this is called a Haunted Forest Favia. I love the names. I'm glad they wrote it on the bags because I would not remember all of these. All right, so here, Haunted Forest Favia. So Favias grow, they have an eye, kind of like the center of each one is their eye, and you can see a dividing line in between them, and then they have the color around. So their eye and their flesh is usually a different color. So you can see this one's got two, eyes are kind of like a pinkish cream, and then you've got like a yellow and green striped base, and these will get a little bit fluffier too as they grow. But Favias are pretty cool as they grow out. 
the Blue Eye Stunner Chalice. I do love chalices for sure. There's a lot of variety in them. So this is pretty neat. You actually see, so those are all in individual eyes. So it's called the Blue Eye Stunner. It's got that green base to it. And then like the growth rim is actually that same bluish color. And this will grow out as like a disc type plate and just tons of those blue eyes on it. So I'm gonna put that somewhere that's got room to grow because uh, the stunner chalices tend to be a little bit on the faster growth side than some of your other ones that'll take longer. So we're gonna put it kind of overhanging somewhere that it can just really plate out. Almost kind of like a Monty with that one. Got some nice, beautiful corals in here today. All right, this one is Electric Daisy Stylo. This is a big piece, too. So this one is beautiful. So it's like almost like a raspberry red base. And then the polyps are going to be kind of fuzzy when they come out all the way, and they've got that yellow-green look to it. As you can see, it's an encrusting coral, so this is where the original frag was, and it's kind of grown out. Look, it's just actually plated away from its own frag plug. So when I put that, it's going to continue to grow onto rocks. I'm going to have somewhere that it's allowed to encrust, and it's not going to really um, necessarily run into other corals and end up in a battle. So you've got to be kind of thoughtful of where you place things. If you don't know, always ask your store you know, how their growth pattern is, where they should be placed, um, and if they're aggressive, so you can kind of decide better. That has a really nice contrast between the polyps and the base on it. All right, we got Fireworks Clove Polyps. These are a soft coral, and a lot of people are like, clove polyps grow over everything. Um, you know, don't put them in your tank. It really depends on the type, but I'll let clove polyps grow over everything because I love these. Um, you can't tell, they're not open yet, but they're gonna actually have a bright pink center and they look like um, stars, like almost. Um, and they're usually really frilly, kind of like little palm tree stars. See if these open up, but I love them, but they are soft coral, so they're just gonna grow all around the rock around them. So do put them in a spot that they have plenty of room to grow or they are going to kind of run into other stuff. They're not aggressive, but they'll grow all around anything that they can. But they're flowy, they have a bright pink center. They are awesome. And then our last one, I don't know who named it, it's Toodle Berry Echinata. <laughs> Toodle. It's like old Toodles from like Mickey Mouse yeah, Clubhouse. <laughs> If you have kids, you totally know, oh, toodles. Um, so this is Toodleberry <laughs> Echinata. <laughs> and that's really pretty. So you can see a fluorescent orange, and it's got green, like almost teal streaking. You see it around the edge of it here, all through the eye. And then you actually see a few other colors in there. And then your little growth rim here, super bright color. And that's one eye, and it kind of continues to grow, and it'll pop up new eyes, and you'll have that green streaking grow throughout the whole colony as it fills out. So a lot of beautiful stuff. All of this is LPS corals, except for the cloves. That is a soft coral. Um, so these are ones um, for LPSs. You want your tank established. You've had fish and some soft corals. Everything's stable, you know, before you add this kind of stuff to it. And um, figuring this tank's been up and running for seven months or so, roughly. You know, we kind of did soft and LPS corals as a mix. It's done very, very well because soft corals and LPS mix a lot better than if you're trying to put like soft corals and SPS together. SPS are very difficult, so we didn't really do much of that in this aquarium. But these are going to look really nice. They're going to open up. Like I said, all of these are going to get a lot bigger. Um, especially the Ganyapores and Albiapores have a lot of flowy, big tentacles. So um, once they start opening up, you'll see that they're just all tucked in. A beautiful selection from Worldwide indeed, as always. And then over the next couple of days, we're going to let them settle in, and then we will put them into their permanent spot on, on the rocks. 
They do look good. They're very pretty. So, all right. New coral's been added. Um, we're going to see if there's any more questions. We also have shirts to give away. And do not forget that Worldwide does have a St. Patrick's Day uh, sale going on. So definitely get in on there after the show. Check out what they've got. You get to save a um, good amount of money on green corals, especially. 25% off all green, 10% off all livestock. You can't go wrong with that. Um, and St. Patty's Day, what a great day. Wish I was wearing green, but I'm not. I have to wear this. <laughs> um, but we do have... Kitchen Knowledge's Freshwater has green in it. Um, we have Freshwater, Saltwater, and a Drop Age Knowledge's shirt. So we're going to give those away. And you can also check those out on the website under um, accessories and swag and stuff. So I'm going to let Keenan settle back in at the computer. He's going to get some questions. We have a lot of comments and questions in here. And I don't even know where to start. Yeah, I'll throw one at you. Okay. Um, oh, I just lost my spot. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Mike Fraser is asking, is there a limit on how many corals you can you should add at once? Not, I mean, I guess within reason. If your tank is new and you're kind of putting your first sets of corals in, I wouldn't go too crazy because you don't want to make sure that um, your water quality is staying stable and, um, you know, they're all happy and everything before you go and put a ton of corals at once. Corals don't add a lot of bio load. So it's not like when you add fish, they're not you know, producing in waste daily as much as a fish does. So you have a little more leeway with adding them. Um, as far as the number that you can add in general, you gotta give everything space to grow. Um, you know, most people end up upgrading. So a lot of times it starts to grow in, you're like, okay, time for a bigger tank. But do keep in mind that you don't want less corals next to each other all over, because they'll never have room to kind of spread out and grow. They'll start to have battles and sting in each other, so. Okay, another one. Uh, Chris is asking, do you recommend dry rock with a lot of crevices when adding corals or anemone? Um, I don't, well, I mean, I guess it's, well, <laughs> 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 like a lot of crevices doesn't really make a difference for corals and anemones, like that doesn't. Um, when you're doing your rock work, you want to make sure you have enough caves and just space for swimming for fish. Um, that's probably the most important. For your corals, it's just surface area. Um, you don't want to make a wall that just like goes up uh, really straight because you can't really place much stuff that's not going to block below it. So you want to have a very like step structured um, rock work because then you have more surface space for corals to grow without shielding everything underneath it. And um, like crevices don't matter to corals, it's really just surface area. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to, okay. um, oh, is that chalice that you put in there a planting type? Plating type, yes. Um, so the blue eye stunner is plating. It's going to grow a lot like a maniapora. It's going to be very large disc. So that's why with knowing how something grows is so important because if you go and put that in the middle of one of your biggest rocks and it starts to grow out, everything under it is going to be shaded and then it's going to be like somewhere you can't put um, corals and stuff at. So just Ask the questions from where you're getting them. What's the growth structure? How fast is it growing? Um, so you know when you place it that it's not going to be an issue down the road. This question is from Mike. He says, do you recommend feeding newly added coral? If so, what foods do you recommend? Yeah, I mean, coral usually takes a few days to settle in until they're fully open. But definitely stick with your normal feeding schedule for your corals, um, new ones or not. And going in there and, talk, you know, there's broadcast feeding and their spot feeding depends on the type of coral. You can look back, we have a couple episodes that are on feeding corals that go into a lot of that. Um, we've got one coming up that's going to be for feeding corals that you kind of show you different types of corals eat differently. So you want to provide them stuff. So you've got zooplankton, you've got phytoplankton, you've got bigger chunks of food, um, and it just depends on the type of coral that you go to. But as soon as they're adjusted in your tank, they're ready to eat. He says, I have a wet and dry and a canister. Is that sufficient filtration for a reef tank? No, don't do it. <laughs> um, just, yeah, no, get rid of it. Um, go to a regular sump, you know, do it. Do it right from the beginning. A wet dry is kind of very old school. It's more meant for um, fish only, older stuff. Canisters generally don't filter enough water per hour. Um, I don't think it's your best scenario. And if you're going to do it with a reef tank, you're going to put a lot of money into it. 
just do it right from the beginning with um, a sump system and just scammer, pro all that stuff and go that way. Great. Um, I just want to take a look at the tank as it is right now so you can... Ah, it's so pretty. I know, it's always so underwhelming whenever new corals come in. I mean, they're so beautiful, but like you can't, ex you can't enjoy them for the first day or two um, in all their beauty as far as open up, especially like ones like these, because like all those ganiopores are gonna get long tentacles and be nice and flowy, but you can't tell that yet. Another reason you should follow Facebook and Instagram, because we'll post updates on there of how the corals are settling in and what they look like when they're open. So not just YouTube, get on Instagram, um, follow us there, Facebook, TikTok now, right? And TikTok, hey! Um, <clears throat> I don't know what we're doing on there. <laughs> You gotta follow us to see. <laughs> I, I should follow us to see what we're doing on TikTok. Um, but yeah, check us out, and we'll definitely be posting more on these corals and what they're um, doing as they open up. We got one more question, and then we'll go ahead and do the shirts. Give okay. Away. Um, Brandon is asking, what is a good glue to use on frag plugs when placing them on the rocks? Um, I usually always use the Ecotech glue, just because it's a really, really thick glue, um, and you can even do it underwater. Um, I find a lot of times, you know, a lot of people say just go get some super glue gel or whatever at the hardware store, it saves you a few bucks, but it's still very runny in um, comparison. And you can get the Ecotech glue in a pretty good quantity. So if you're doing corals all the time, those little tiny tubes of the super glue gel aren't going to last you very long and ends up adding up, probably costing more than getting a bigger jar from Ecotech, which is like perfect consistency um, glue. And you can put it on there and put it underwater and it sticks. So. Right. So we're doing shirts now. So we're doing shirts. You want to show which ones you want to give away? Okay. Well, you get to pick. So to get on our website, we have Drop Your Knowledges, and then you have Get Your Knowledges in Freshwater. I can't, we really need to find some better stands for these things. We and some in, or at least some people some, just walk through. Yeah. Work. We're just going to hire some people that walk around the studio with the shirts on to show you. Um, so you get to pick whichever one you want. We've got your, this one, Freshwater, Saltwater, anything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull two winners. Ready? Oh, you already have it. I'm not doing anything, right? Hey! Oh, we have Shane Emery and Brandon Cunningham. Congratulations. <laughs> Email support at waterboxaquariums.com. They'll get your information. Let them know what shirt you want and what size. I'll get you hooked up with your knowledges. Just like you get every week on Wednesday here. Every week. That's why you got to join. Like, follow us. Hit subscribe. I don't know, Rich usually always does the, like, the YouTube subscribe, like, share, like, I don't really know about that stuff. That's his job. But um, definitely follow us. We're here every Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know if Keita's doing more questions. I don't really know. Um, no, I think we're good to go. I think um, it was pretty good adding all those corals in. Uh, don't forget the Worldwide Corals promotion. I'm not sure if you want to show that. Yeah, we showed it when we came back in. Awesome. Um, so to go check them out after this. They got some beautiful stuff. And next week we'll be back visiting with the frag feeding corals. So for the one that had a question or anyone wants to know, we're going to go over feeding corals, what types eat what, you know, broadcast spot, all that good stuff. So it's a really nice hands-on. You'll be able to see all the corals beautiful and opened up and in their spot. So definitely tune in with us next week, every Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Thank you all for watching. Remember, we're live on Facebook and YouTube. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe and hit those notifications. We're live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us next week. Thanks for watching. <laughs>